thank you guys for coming to listen to us talk about our ventures today. I'm going to talk about my venture in fashion called Hemel. So in 2015, when I moved to New York City, layering and clothing started to become very popular. So when I was in my micro apartment, I decided to attach little hooks onto the bottom of my t-shirts as a way to attach drapery, as you see right here. This was actually um, a curtain that was used as a way of form and draping where I could create a layering effect without needing to actually put on multiple layers. <coughs> so our mission is to create value through luxury while embracing utilitarianism. Status Himmel is the first collection by Himmel. It features si the simple tea, which you can see right here, and they're all made of uh, organic cotton and soy blend. They're extremely soft to the touch. And then the kangaroo tea, which is um, just a variation of the tea with the same composition that features a functional pocket across the chest. Um, all of the shirts come with a zipper across the bottom, and the Riri zippers that were custom made in Switzerland just for this. And they're considered the Rolls Royce of zippers, which helps bring this into the luxury market. Um, the symbols that we created as attachments are an expansion of the drapery from the previous slide, and the symbols are considered to be an experimental but new accessory that offers an effortless form of expression that you are able to attach onto your t-shirts without disrupting the comfort of your outfit. So as you can see right here, I started with a pop-up shop in the Lower East Side on Orchard Street. And this is where I was able to introduce people to the brand and the concept. And at the pop-up shop, I had people stop in from models that I saw <coughs> on pictures around the city, all the way up to grandparents that were staying in hotels around the neighborhood. They were all extremely intrigued by the idea because it was something that they had never seen before. But most of the time that I spent there was actually educating them on the product, more so than creating sales because I think the area that I was in was not very appropriate for the price range. But I was able to generate a few just based off the idea that people were excited to see a new product in the market. So hopefully one day I'll be able to have a storefront so that any idea that I do create, I'm able to sell it without limits in the same way that Apple is able to educate their consumers when they sell their products. So next I decided to test status Himmel in retail locations. I started with Unknown in Miami, which is um, a luxury boutique store in Aventura Mall, and Brigade, which is a boutique in the Cleveland Mall. So when Unknown decided to carry the brand, they wanted to carry one shirt for one symbol. As you can see right here, they carried the black symbol <coughs> with the denim symbol. So they carried for every one shirt, one symbol. So there was no need to explain how the shirt worked, although people were able to see that you could remove the bottom piece if they wanted to. So this created no confusion for the customers or the employees. But on the other hand, Brigade wanted to try carrying the full line of products. They wanted to carry one of everything. As you can see right here, this is a picture that they posted um, on their Instagram page with the natural kangaroo tea with the cork symbol. And what happened with them is, as the holiday it was doing, it was doing well, and they were able to sell a few items. Um, they were able to sell items both in store and online. But when the holiday time came around, they ended up getting all new employees. So they had to teach the employees how to, how to work the shirts, and then they had to teach the employees how to teach the customers how to work the shirts. And when I went into the store to see how everything was going, they actually had the wrong sizes attached to the wrong pieces, and it was a very ugly picture. So going forward, I saw that Status Himmel had potential in the market, but it would need to have some type of change that it would allow it to be within the retail market. So going forward, him will need to create new collections that are suitable to be sold in boutiques as well as department stores, and they all must continue to have an original essence both in the logo, the product themselves, and the reason I use the word essence is because I consider it to be a property that the brand can now live without. So I decided to test different logos, perspective logos, with perspective brand collections. Um, one of each, one of which was ones that I had previously used, the symbols and the airplane logo. 
So I had people match them and then choose which one was their favorite, and then I just and then I talked to them about how they felt regarding them and if it felt like it was anything that they had ever seen before. So the slides ended up to be the um, least well received of the two because it had a kind of an effect where it felt like something that they had already seen before and the original essence was not there. As well as with takeoff, which had a more generic feel, people did not see that this was very new or original. So when talking with them about the logos, however, most of the likes came on the ones with my name, Himmel, actually in the name. So when I asked them about why they felt that they liked the name Himmel over Takeoff, it was because they felt that Takeoff was too generic and that Himmel had more of a mysterious feel to it. When I was talking with people from within the United States, though, they asked questions like, what does the name Himmel actually mean? And when I told them that Himmel means heaven, it put like a smile on their face and you could see that it gave them a much better connection to the brand. And then when I spoke with people outside of the United States, um, when I was in Montreal and um, people from outside of the States that were within New York, they asked me if I was from Sweden most of the time and I was actually surprised because I did not know that the name Himmel had any origin in Sweden and it was cool to learn that it wasn't a brand that would only feel like it was coming directly from Germany but people could use it as more of a universal term and be able to connect it with themselves. So next with the products, when I asked them, obviously I said that the slides were not as well received. And because product development is so costly, anything, it can range from $1,000 for the slides and up to $5,000 for the garment backpack. I noticed that with such a low um, re like receivable rate, that it would not be worth going forward with producing the slides for the second collection. But the bag did receive um, really good feedback, especially from people within the fashion industry. When I was speaking with an assistant at Paper Magazine, she was telling me a story about how she every single day she has to lug around garment bags and she needs to carry them around the city and most of the time they're the size of her and she has to throw them over her shoulder and get on the subway and walk around while carrying these massive <coughs> bags. And people like her were instantly asking when they could buy this product. Mm -hmm. So that was a great validation in itself. So going forward, I hope to be able to have the garment backpack ready for sale by July under the collection name Himmel Original. Um, and they will all be under the parent company name Himmel. Very good, thank you.